Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms here to talk about exactly what I mentioned like in the intro, all about optics. Talking about the red dot sight, the holographic weapon sight, and of course prism optics, and which one might be the best for you. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and hop into it and let's talk about the basic red dot sight, like what I've got on my FN510 with the EOTech E-Flex that you see right here. This is a simple red dot top load battery that you see right here, which is really nice so you don't have to remove the optic uh, whenever you switch out the battery, which is really great. And it just produces a a single red dot that you put on top of your target when you're aiming down your sights and then you pull the trigger and that's pretty much where it's gonna go easy enough right and if you take a look at my LMT Lewis machine and tool LMT defense uh, this is the R20 the Rahi I think that's how you pronounce it anyway the Estonian defense force reference rifle 556 piston driven gun that I like a lot and I'm really happy to have my hands on right now. Uh, this one right here is outfitted with the Aimpoint T2. This is a fantastic two MOA red dot that is simple, durable, it's pretty pricey, but it's going to do everything I want it to do, especially with all of the different brightness settings that this optic has to offer. So first off red dots what are some good things about them one of the best things about them is the fact that they have such an incredible battery life and there's different technology out there too like swamp fox hollow sun they incorporate this like shake awake technology where if the optic is in a resting position at rest hasn't moved nothing like that for a certain amount of time then it turns off then the moment you pick it up you're ready to get into action because the reticle is on the optic is illuminated or at least a, well has the reticle that's being illuminated and you're ready to get right into the fight easy enough good day right so that's one really nice thing about red dots really long battery life another thing is look at how small this guy is they're lightweight and they don't take a lot of room on the gun, which is really nice. So they've got great durability also, depending on the red dot, depending on the manufacturer and the quality, of course, will depend on the durability. But ultimately, it takes a really small footprint. And on top of that, you also have different mounting options. For the Aimpoint T2 right now, I've got it on a ScalarWorks mount, which is nice QD utilizing this little wheel right back here. You just rotate that and then the optic comes off easy enough. But let's say I'm shooting under night vision, which with red dots you can do. If I go ahead and try to shoot under night vision with this i'm going to be really low on the gun which typically is great but my night vision might be getting in the way i might i might not be able to actually get a good sight picture so or good sight alignment so if you get like one of the unity tactical risers that can really elevate the optic itself now i'll be able to use that passive aiming technique and still be able to see my optic see my reticle through my night vision through the actual optic tube and then be able to overlay that reticle on my target and engage it effectively again all through night vision or let's say you're shooting with a gas mask or something like that and you're going to have to have a little bit more of a cheek weld something that's going to elevate you a little bit more then yeah it'll be nice to have that extended riser which is again just a great thing so that's great now some of the downsides to uh, red dots are again they vary from you know a couple hundred bucks to very expensive uh, i mean you can you can spend what six seven even i mean you can find red dots out there for a thousand dollars you know what i mean uh, but with that being said you'll find also that the reticle alone you're not going to get much smaller than two moa even when i'm looking at the reticle here it's still a nice crisp reticle i can turn it down pretty bright or turn it down to where it's not so bright um but that's about it you know what i mean i mean it's two moa i prefer i pre pre oh wow if i could speak i prefer to have something a little bit more precise like perhaps maybe a one moa reticle but two moa isn't bad not what not bad whatsoever and so i'd be really comfortable utilizing this in a defensive situation or combat situation something like that you know what i mean or you know home defense now you might be noticing too that i've got the lens clap closed on this and that's because aimpoint actually well they knew that this was going to be an option notice that the rear cap is transparent i can see right through that but the front lens cap I cannot and that's because if you utilize what's called the bend and aiming concept keep both eyes open you don't have to worry about your objective lens glare all you have to do is just well keep both eyes open 
put your aim just like you typically would and your dominant eye will pick up the reticle, your non-dominant eye will pick up the target, you overlay the two, pull the trigger, and you'll hit your target. It's actually a pretty nifty design. A guy by the name of Benden designed it actually for use with the ACOG, which we'll talk about in just a moment because that's a prism optic. But continuing on, what are some of the downsides? Uh, they could be arguably, again, across the board, price, you're, it's competitive, right? I mean, for each of these optics, red dot holographic prism, you can find cheap, you can find expensive, you can find quality, you can find not, right? So it just depends on what you go with at the end of the day. But with that, the Aimpoint T2, super durable. Maybe some other ones out there, not as durable. But as far as just a general overview goes, red dots aren't typically as durable as holographics or as prisms. But with that being said, let's talk about holographic sights. On my Daniel Defense Mark 18, yes, this is my Mark 18, but this is an LMT 14.5 upper. This is not pinned and weld, so this is considered a short barreled rifle. That's why it's on my SBR lower. I do have the EOTech EXPS 3 holographic weapon sight with the G35. This is a five power magnified, well, five power. 5x magnifier there we go now the exps3 is a nice one you'll notice it has an incorporated qd mount which is pretty nice but the mounts that you get you're pretty much stuck with when it comes to these different types of holographics so take that for what you will if you go and shoot the night vision like i was talking about before then you'll need either picatinny risers or something like that even though this is <laughs> has the night vision button right here so that we have a nice crisp reticle to see under night vision but that's pretty much what you've got Great. Now, EOTEX right off the bat are, and on holographics alone, uh, right off the bat are known for their durability. We have torture tested, broken them, and it's pretty insane. I talked about before how red dots might be considered the least durable out of these optics today, and that's because, well, these things can take a beating, so much so where I've actually had the housing shift uh, away from the actual optic itself. This is, again, just a protective outer layer. And on top of that, I've also broken the front glass when we torture tested it. And with the holographic, since it is producing a hologram or projecting a hologram, you can still pick up the reticle and engage your target. However, if you were to do that with a red dot, break that front glass, that red dot doesn't have anything to reflect. So now it's or reflect off of so now you're left without an optic and if you don't have backup irons you're screwed and that's true for both the holographic and the red dot if your battery dies because you have to have batteries in order to pick up that reticle and <laughs> for pretty much your optic to work and with that Battery life on holographics aren't as favorable. Granted, it's still really, really good, but it's not gonna be that 60 plus thousand hours of battery life, depending on what brightness setting you have, like of the T2. I think that's like 60,000 hours, 60 to 70,000 hours on the level six, level six setting, something like that. But anyway, so interestingly enough, right? You'll also notice that the EOTech uh, has a little bit better reticle in my mind because it's not just a simple red dot. Now, depending on which model of EOTech or holographic you go with, then yeah, there are options for just a simple red dot. However, on your typical EOTech, you have a larger outer ring, you also have a center dot, and then sometimes you also have different bullet drop dots as well that can either be sighted in for, well, different, different distances. But the holographic reticle is gonna give you a little bit more information than the actual simple red dot will. And with that, the center dot of a holographic like the EOTech is going to be one MOA, offering you a little bit more precise mm, picture, if you will. So I like that a lot about the EOTech. However, you're also going to notice it's bigger, it's bulkier, it's going to take a little bit more of a footprint, especially if you go with the one that like the 512 that takes double A's, it'll be a little bit longer, kind of running out to here just about. And so with that, it's gonna be a little bit heavier as well. So if you've already got a heavy rifle enough as it is, uh, quad rails and you know flashlights and lasers and gizmos and stuff, then maybe you want something a little bit lighter. But at the end of the day, the holographic is one that I trust that I know I can beat up on and it's still going to work just fine for me. So what about the prism optic? Like, the Swamp Fox Raider that you see right here. The Swamp Fox Raider is a fantastic 1x magnified, or I shouldn't say just one power, 1x uh, prism optic. Now what's great about prism optics is, well now the technology has gotten to where 
they can be pretty compact. Now I do have this coupled with an EOTech G33 also, and that's just because I want to show that you can magnify a prism optic but it's not ideal. The red dot and the holographic are definitely gonna be a little bit more ideal to, to, to magnify, but the holographic optic is gonna be the preferred optic to magnify because when you magnify a holographic, the reticle actually stays the same size, which is great. On a red dot, it'll actually kind of distort it a little bit. With the holographic, the, the reticle actually looks clear, which is crazy to me because the reticle naturally isn't as clear as a simple red dot or as crisp, but whenever you magnify it, it looks even better. I don't know, it's wild, but it works. Whenever you magnify a prism optic, you have to make sure that the focus is in such that where these communicate, and that way you have a clear sight picture, clear target, and clear reticle. If you don't kind of mess with the functionality of both of these, the focus on both of these, then you're not gonna have you're not going to be able to get a shot off accurately at least so you know, take that for what you will anyway one really big upside to prism optics is the fact that they're that their reticle is etched you don't have to rely on a battery to be able to see your reticle now granted if it's completely dark out then you have no illumination um then yeah you're probably going to need a battery or tritium like in an acog to illuminate that reticle so you can actually see it right but having a etched reticle is ideal. Now you'll also notice something else. This is my Colt M4 with the front sight post and a rear iron sight, okay? With that, if I were to co-witness, <laughs> well, I'm not even co-witness, but let's say I go ahead and I, my iron sights, well, they're zeroed, right? Now all of a sudden I put my prism optic in because the glass actually distorts a little bit of what I'm seeing my iron sights are most likely not going to be zeroed again so you need to zero your iron sights through your prism optic if that's what you plan to do just throwing that out there if you want to co-witness or something like that or just back up irons so just keep that in mind. But prism optics I think are pretty wonderful, especially again with that etched reticle and especially for durability when it comes to something like the ACOG. And what you see right here on my M4A1 R3 by Daniel Defense, lightweight gun, this thing is awesome. It's the new RIS-3 M-Lock rail, PEC-15 up front with the Surefire Turbo. But the Trijicon ACOG with the RMR combo is one of my favorite. The only problem is with prism optics, especially when we start talking about the ACOG, is even though these are the most battle-proven optics in the world, their design is, well, almost flawless, right? You do have a limited eye relief and also a limited eye box. Something to take into consideration with all of these optics is parallax. If you don't have a good side alignment, let's say you're shooting over the hood of a car, you're shooting under different barriers, barricades, whatever it is, you're shooting offhand, or I shouldn't say offhand, sorry about that, but you're shooting with your non-dominant hand and you're trying to get a good side alignment. If you're not exactly right, then you could actually see a, a little bit of a shift in your reticle and that could throw your actual shot placement. Not by much, depending on what range you're shooting at, you'll still be combat effective but it's also something to take into consideration with holographics are going to have very minimal parallax you might have something like a thermal shift however which again we might be able to have a conversation about on a later day but with all that being said prism optics like the ACOG are infamous for that short eye relief where I aim about right here is perfect but if I get too close which ultimately gives me a you know a nice wider field of view when I get up on it yeah well, ask Kaya about what scope eye is, all right? But if I get too far back, you'll quickly start to notice scope shadow, and then you won't be accurate, and you won't have true sight alignment when you look through the optic. But their durability is renowned. And on top of that, something else to talk about is, some of you are probably already saying, dude, this is blasphemy. You have an ACOG that takes a battery and not tritium with the fiber optic, which is pretty much always illuminated even when it's very dark outside. Still needs some ambient light, but not a lot. <laughs> but with that, yes, I did opt to go with the battery a uh, battery option for the ACOG in this case because I wanted that forward and top mounted Trijicon RMR placement. And so that's what I've got on this guy. Okay, so I think I've pretty much hit everything about all these different optics. So now it comes down to which one's my favorite, which one do I prefer? And that ultimately depends on the application. I know for a fact if I wanna go home defense, then I'll probably go quite simply 
with a red dot. And here's why I agree with that. It's simple, I can have it, you know, a zero for within 15, 20 yards, which is probably more than needed uh, for my home defense setup, right? With that also, with again, uh, talking about that shake awake technology that I mentioned before, I really don't have to worry about battery life, things like that. But if you take a look at the Swamp Fox Raider that I mentioned earlier, it also has that shake awake technology incorporated and it also has an etched reticle. So no matter what, I'm gonna have a reticle and I feel really, really comfortable and confident about that. But a red dot for me, I think is probably gonna be preferred for maybe a home defense setup, all right? It's lightweight, again, takes up a, little, a minimal footprint on the gun itself, and it's something that I know I can go ahead and get really quick target acquisition on and send that round when stress is high and those seconds count. However, if I know I'm gonna be, as I probably will be, running around either at the proving grounds or the tactical games with this rifle, with my Huxworks Flow 556K that's currently on my Colt, I'm probably gonna go with the ACOG because I'm gonna have unknown distances uh, to engage a target with. And even without the red dot mounted up top, I know I'll still be able to engage a target close range utilizing the bend and aiming concept that I mentioned before. So I really am confident with this optic out to distances and close if I need to. So I feel really good about that, but probably something I wouldn't use on a home defense gun or maybe like a duty gun Maybe, depending on the application, depending on, well, what your duty is at the end of the day. I would feel a little bit more confident with an EOTech. If I knew that I'd be going into CQB duty perhaps, right? Because again, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit less footprint than the Trigicon, than the ACOG, than some prisms out there. No, it doesn't offer me any magnification, but I can go with the magnifier if I want, or not at all. Either way, I feel pretty confident with it because also you can have this zeroed for the billet drop compensation that is with this optic. You have that large outer ring that makes it very easy to pick up in close quarters, but also a very fine center dot, one MOA, and then also bullet drop compensation on top of that for a greater distance. Again, it has everything I need, but with a more lineage to close quarters, which again, if I'm law enforcement, something like that, this might be the optic that I would go for and feel really, really comfortable. So that's my answer. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Also, we're putting together Team Classic Firearms for probably the Proving Grounds down in South Carolina at the Sawmill, something I'm really excited to run. And like I said, I will be running this exact setup. I just shot this, so trying to remove the Huxworks here might be a little difficult, we'll see. There we go. <laughs> but I will probably be running the Flow 556K with the Dano Defense M4A1R3. The R3 is the new ambi controlled lower receiver from Daniel Defense, which is very, very nice. I'll probably be running this that you see right here. And uh, if you guys would like to see, I think it'd be Ryan, myself, Kaya, and maybe one or two others uh, to run a team and participate in the Proving Grounds. If you don't know what that is, look it up. I think it'd be pretty fun. And I'll leave it off there, guys. Let me know down in the comment section what works best for you and which application duty gun shtf gun it's hit the fan you need to grab something and go let me know what optic works best for you home defense so on and so forth and while you're uh, perusing the website make sure you visit cfcontest.com to well just go visit what we've got going on over there i think maybe one day you might even see this rifle the lmt which, you know, is getting a little dark out here now, but, you know, that's okay. But you might even see this LMT R20, the Estonian Defense Force reference rifle at CF Contest one day, maybe. Maybe even an R3. Maybe. <laughs> but we'll leave it off there, guys. Again, cfcontest.com is where you can check out all the cool things happening there. As always, we appreciate you, your viewership, for stopping by, your business. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time at Classic Firearms.